So first off, the white coat ceremony symbolizes the rite of passage and the importance of compassionate patient care uh, from the very beginning of training. Today, in addition to receiving the white coat and reciting the oath, our students will, in fact, be sort of formally cloaked before family, friends, and supporters uh, with the iconic white coat that signifies their status as healthcare professionals. This ceremony was importantly initiated in around 1993 by the work of Dr. Arnold P. Gold, who was a pediatric neurologist at the Columbia University of Physicians and Surgeons, and who thought that there really was not enough emphasis on the role of humanism in the curriculum of medical schools uh, to date. Nearly every school in the United States now has a white coat ceremony, including the schools of nursing, physician studies, and others. <clears throat> the question comes up, why do we, in fact, have the ceremony at this time during the year, and why not at the very beginning of the school year, as many other schools? As you know, our first course, CPR, Challenges and Responsibilities, signifies the beginnings of the clinical portion of the curriculum, and one of our intentions from the very beginnings has been to marry the clinical and the science from the very first days of medical school. And I think one of the most important contributions of this school and our founding dean to medical education is demonstrating that students, in fact, who are immersed in clinical training learning humanism from the beginning, understanding the science, in fact, learn the science better than students who are not uh, exposed to that amount of clinical training. We hold this ceremony at this time because after the first eight weeks, our students are all licensed EMTs by the state of New York, and in addition to their white coat, they in fact will receive their EMT pin, as well as their gold Humanism Honor Society pin. What is the growing importance of humanism in our curriculum and across the nation? Many of us feel that there is way too much emphasis on test scores, grades, and a number of other things that don't necessarily fully demonstrate the potential of a student and a young physician in the care of the patient. Importantly, the work of the Gold Humanism Society, in particular Arnold Gold, Arnold unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, but his wife Sandra continues this, uh, this mission is to, in fact, make sure that those postgraduate residency programs understand the role of humanism when selecting residents into their programs. We host the Gold Humanism Honor Society, which during the latter clinical year, students uh, peer select approximately 15% of their class for induction into this very prestigious um, honor society. And this honor society is growing in its importance as residency program directors select students uh, for moving forward. So, uh, we hold this uh, in great esteem and with the work of Dr. Lauren Block and others who work on the patient physician and society course, this is a key part of our curriculum. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce again Dr. Lauren Smith, who's going to give you a little bit of a story, uh, I believe, as usual, of his initial white coat. Dr. Smith. Well, good afternoon, everyone and welcome to the best class we've ever admitted to the School of Medicine. Now I expect you to live up to that. I'll tell you a couple of things today. My, my day started very interestingly this morning. Uh, I, I got to a Long Island Jewish Medical Center early to attend the pediatric grand rounds, not because I'm a pediatrician, but because one of my lifelong physician friends, a probably at, for 20 years, the premier pediatric surgeon in the city of New York, was retiring. And he was retiring uh, because it was the right time for him. He and I went to medical school together, and I knew him for all of our careers. And during the time that I was at Mount Sinai School of Medicine, virtually every year he was named the Teacher of the Year by the medical student faculty. Steve was a very special person, but what defined him, I think you'll understand in one story of a strange encounter I had with him. He invited me to go see the Yankees play. He got very good tickets from someone, I suspect a patient, uh, right behind the dugout, and we sat down, and it was the best seats I had ever sat in for a game, and things were going quite fine until people started coming down the aisle, parent and child, to thank Dr. Dolgen 
and to just say hello. How they spotted him, I have no idea. These people were sitting all over the stadium. I think by the end of the fifth inning, we had had 11 families come down to say hello to him and to thank him for what he did for their children. And what I realized was that Steve was not only the best pediatric surgeon in the city of New York, but he was a real doctor. He didn't just do technical care. He loved his patients, and they loved him back. And at the end of his career, I reminded him of that day. And he claims I was lying, but it wasn't. Uh, in fact, I was so impressed by the, by the way these people felt about him that I knew that his whole career had been a success. And I want you to remember the challenge is to let go of all the things that make you a really good non-doctor. And by the time you leave this medical school and residency, have changed into the person who deserves to be called doctor, whether you're working, whether you're playing, whether you're encountering people in the grocery store, that you are now a new person. And that person thinks differently and relates to the world and to people differently. And that's my job and everybody on the faculty to help you grow into that person called a doctor. And that's what we celebrate today. However, it wasn't always like this. So let me just tell you about my white coat ceremony. So I entered NYU Medical School in the, in the 1970s. Uh, I had one letter of acceptance, which I was very gleeful about, and then I got sent a note that was basically a postcard in an envelope saying, report to classroom B, 8 a.m., September 8th. That was it. No, no any welcome, no thank you. So I had a lot of trouble finding classroom B. I had no idea in the world where that was, but once we all, all of us who were meandering around lost found out what classroom we were supposed to go into, I'm sitting there really waiting excitedly about Welcome to medical school. And a person comes out on the stage, says lights off, slides on. A slide pops up. He points with a pointer to something and says, what's this structure? And here's the first thing, welcome to medical school. Everybody in the front half of the classroom raised their hands at once to answer this question. And they were waving so that they would get called on. And I'm sitting in the back row because that's where I sit, sat for all of medical school. And I turned to the guy next to me and I said, who the hell are these people? I never went to school with anybody who did this. Well, that was welcome to medical school. But then, you know, I thought, something's got to happen besides this guy talking about the spine of, uh, of a cadaver. But no, that was welcome to medical school. There was no welcome. About two or three weeks later, it was time to start seeing patients. And I got another postcard, this time in my mailbox at school. And it said, report to this building, one of the build many buildings of Bellevue Hospital, and go get your, your two white coats. So I take the card, walk down, and it's in the sub-basement of one of the old Bellevue Hospital buildings, which were very scary buildings. If you, the people who ever trained there know going to the basement of those buildings was a leap of life-threatening activities. <laughs> I get to the room, and I walk in the room, and there's a big counter and rows and rows and rows of shelves of white coats, and one woman who's standing there looking a little irritated. And as I walk up, she goes, are you a new medical student? And I said, yes, I'm, here's my card. She goes, fine, grabs my card, looks at me, says, OK, I got your size. She pulls two, two white coats down, puts them down, and says, you lose them, you pay for them. <laughs> and that was it. That was my white coat ceremony. <laughs> we have gotten a little more humanistic in the introduction to medical school than then. and so. Today is a special day. If you lose them, we'll figure it out. <laughs> but if you never wash them, we may react adversely. Uh, but really, this is a special day, and I want you guys to really enjoy it, your families to enjoy it. Uh, I think you, you, you know that you didn't get here by yourself. No matter how self-reliant you are, there are tons of people who have supported you your whole life. And there will be many more who are called faculty in this medical school who will support you at least for the next four years. So welcome to medical school. And let me ask Dr. Rona Waldenberg to come on up and start calling you up for your white coats. Thank you.
Welcome, everyone. Um, in the interest of time, we're going to be calling um, our students up two at a time. So I know there's going to be a lot of applause and whatever. Just wait till I finish the two names so uh, at least people can hear the second name. So uh, to all of you, welcome. And I am honored and privileged to present to you the entering class of 2019. Joy Atwanje and Amanda Aguilo Quadra. Deshaun Allen and Badir Alison. Ariel Aminov and Julian Azar. <laughs> Sabrina Begley and Chirag Bhatia. Tanzim Buya and Yash Besen. <laughs> Miriam Blumenthal and Matt Brayman. Joshua Rudy Charktuck and Madalena Conte. <laughs> Dylan Cooper and Christina Cody. Christopher Chrysostomo and Woodland Daniel. Anise Diaz and Samantha Donovan. <laughs> Peter Jogis and Justin Esposito. <laughs> Austin Fisher and Madison Frazier. Narupa Galagadera and Avinash Garlapati. <laughs> J. 
Dwayne Gentle and David Golombek. Jonathan Guevara and Emma Gugerty. Adam Haas and Ariel Hennig. Shelby Isaacs and Darius Jonash. <laughs> Rachel Jocelyn and Young Ho Jung. Trey Keel and Victoria Keir. <laughs> Ryan Kenny and Syra Khan. Adam Caridley and Richard Joseph Clares the third. Andrew Coe and Emily Kalatka. Morgan Crush and Brittany Quate. <laughs> Alexandra Landau and Nathan Lau. Diana Lee and Eric Trake Lee. <laughs> Christian Lee Young and Stephanie Lynn. Andre Liu and Daniel G. Lynch. <laughs> Arif Mahmood 
and Tanya Mamdui. Alexander Martin and Michael McDonough. Josue Manaya and Ariana Mohammed. Joseph Mueirano and Nicholas Montanero. Fatma Moswala and Salem Najjar. <laughs> Gotham, Gotham Kumar Nayar and Brenda Newman. Lauren Paulette and Christina Pellin. <laughs> Courtney Pina and Tamir Pinhasov. Camille Pinpin and Lindsay Pliskin. Gabrielle Pollock and Olivia Reyes. Aaron Ree and Erica Rivera. Elizabeth Rosen and Marianne Ruel. Ian Rumble and Brendan Ryu. <laughs> Tiffany Sahadio and Milugeta Sarbanes. Darren Schiller and Robert Charbet. Yeah. 
Acacia Shepard and Samantha Seiler. Anthony Slayton and Benjamin Spielman. Rebecca Sudam and Gary Tan. Patrick Tierney and Kevin Tong. David Turkov and Arne Uthekumar. How did I do? How did I do? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Michael Varone and Maya Vassar. Yi Ling Wang and Stephanie Williams. <laughs> Alec Shung and Disha Yalai. Aaron Zhang and Ben Zhang. And last but certainly not least, Michelle Jung. So please join me for a round of applause for the class of entering 2019. Well, that was pretty exciting. <laughs> Getting dressed in front of all these people is <laughs> a feat. So now I'm going to ask the class to stand and all the physicians in the audience to please stand and renew their oath. This is a modified Hippocratic oath that was actually modified by our first class of the medical school and has become the oath that we use in this medical school. I would ask everyone to speak along with me as opposed to waiting till I say the words. So everyone has the oath? Okay, let's start. I swear to fulfill to the best of my ability and judgment this covenant. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine 
with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures that are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will remember that there is art to medicine as well as science, that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death, and never abuse the power that has been bestowed upon me. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart, a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect not only the person, but a family and community. I will prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferable to cure. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, those sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. I will maintain the health of my own mind, body, and spirit, so I am able to discharge my duties appropriately. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected while I live, and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. Congratulations. Welcome to medical school. You can be seated. So now as we conclude the formal part of our day, I would ask that everyone allow the class to process out before exiting, then there'll be opportunities for pictures endlessly throughout the day, as long as the coats stay presentable. Uh, I welcome everyone to join us back at the medical school. Uh, there's an opportunity for pictures right outside the theater here, and then uh, the shuttle bus or, or just a walk over to the medical school, and we will celebrate for the rest of the afternoon. So. If everyone is ready, why don't we begin the procession? <laughs> 